Koyuki and Kabi. We have uh, Chalky joining us here at the caster's desk. What do you what do you think about this matchup? Uh, this matchup, definitely players we haven't seen in a while. Koyuki going all the way back to the Fight Night days, and Kabi yeah. is kind of a fresh face. Yeah, pretty good stuff. I saw you had some notes on the World Championship points of, uh, of all these players involved today. Uh, how's, how's that looking? Yeah, in this match, Kabi has 20 points already, so in decent standing, but mm -hmm. not quite yet in qualification standing. And Koyuki actually has zero. So uh -oh. he's looking to get some points at this event. Now, what what does like um, what does a hundred points mean to any player here? So a hundred points is the first place prize, and that will put you right into the top eight of pretty much any region and get you some buys in the world championship qualifiers. Pretty well, that's important. Some good stuff. Um, Kabi and Koyuki, we see uh, we see their classes here. We see the hunter from both players. We see the warrior from both players. We see shaman from one and rogue from the other. Now, um, you were talking a bit about this uh, yesterday, just you know, we were talking about things. That, that Rogue seems like a pretty good third choice, yeah. but how do you compare that to Shaman? Uh, shaman, if it's maybe like the Mech Shaman, Mech Shaman can have a chance against anything, so that's mm -hmm. a decent choice. Uh, standard mid-range Shaman, uh, they struggle a lot against board clears and whirlwind-like effects, so they can get pretty punished by Patient Warrior, and they also struggle a lot against Unleash the Hounds and face damage. So they can struggle a lot against Hunter. So, and Warrior. And yeah, Hunter and Warrior are generally pretty good against yeah. the Shaman, so uh, I don't recommend it if you're expecting Patron Warrior and Hunter. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's maybe more the Mech Shaman, and uh, that's pretty coin flippy. If you're able to get that early aggression, it can do very well against Patron Warrior. All right. Well, we are seeing uh, the Rogue out of the gate here against Kabi's Warrior. Wow, we saw Ysera. That means yeah. it's most likely Control Warrior, and that shield block pretty much confirms it. Control Warrior versus Rogue. Very, very, very heavily warrior, warrior. favorite yeah, Especially with the uh, Fiery War Axe. Very important card in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, Fiery War Axe is really good. It's two. Well, oftentimes a lot of rogues... Two's not good, though, is it? No, two's not good. <laughs> it's not good, but it's not that bad, depending on how many 3-3s three your opponent produces, which the rogue has, like, none right now. Yeah. So it's pretty bad, especially with the I think, I think rogues in general just have very, very few. Yeah, generally you save your 3-3s three against warrior to play two 3-3s three on turn six. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you, you mean SIs? SI well, and Farseer. Ring. Farseer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you want to play them both at the same time wow. on turn six to avoid just weapons killing Both them. players just have all of their weapon stuff. <laughs> that yeah. favors the rogue, though, because the warrior, most of the weapon stuff is like, yeah. you know, two attacks, single file, and the rogue is, well, just kill you. I don't really care how much Ooh. health you have. Ooh, the Jones, though. That's going to be really big later this match. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not the greatest draw from either player. I think when both players draw badly, it favors the warrior, though, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. The rogue is the one that is unfavored, so they need to draw better to win the matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Their hero power is just worse. Like, the warrior just keeps gaining armor, and you keep doing basically nothing. Yeah. Now, what do you think the chances are that we see, like, some kind of surprise new deck in this kind of tournament format? Because, like, it, it does discourage that a little bit being conquest. But at the same time, with people expecting cards in you know such a standard form, um, maybe the surprise factor is bigger than normal. Also, I don't know. Like Patron Warrior and Midrange Hunter have been dominating, or Hybrid Hunter slash Midrange Hunter have been di dominating the ladder for like a month and a half now. Yeah. So I feel like if there was one new deck that beat both of those, that like broke the meta, it would, we would have seen it on ladder by now. Someone would have hit number yeah. one on ladder with it. So I don't think it exists. Okay. But I could be wrong. It would be pretty good if someone could come up with a counter to both and use it as their third deck. I think that's going to be a big story of this tournament, is what players decided for their third deck. Like, both of these players have Warrior and Hunter, but they both came to very different conclusions on what their third deck should be. Yeah. Shaman yeah. and Rogue. So far, uh, we've seen most of the advantages come. Uh, well, Demigod won with his strategy to Bully Hunter, yeah. which was yeah. very nice. But also, uh, Trump's strategy was, um, you know, not nothing. It was, you know, people playing weapons. Let's put Harrison Jones in every deck. Yeah. Yeah. So look, fine adjustments like that does make quite a big difference in this type of format. Yeah, actually in this matchup, um, the Warrior played a Despite and passed, and Koyuki could have coined out a Harrison Jones if he had one in his hand. And it's not unheard of for Rogues to be playing Harrison right now. Yeah. So we're talking a lot about everyone having a Hunter and a Warrior, but uh, Cabby's lineup is a Control Warrior, 
which is much different than a hunter and a warrior, because most of the time when you think hunter and warrior, you're thinking the patron warrior, and yep. they're just going for the three strongest ladder decks, basically. Yeah, but, in an interview, uh, Cabby described himself as a very control player. Like, he enjoys making really greedy, value-based plays, really loves control decks, so... But he did say he respects patron as one of the best decks, so it still surprised me a little to see it. He must have some sort of plan. Maybe he's trying to bully something specific with this lineup. I'm really interested in what his shaman deck is. That's like the main question right now. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah, does, does seem very unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Shaman doesn't. What bully would be much. more unusual than shaman? Priest? No, shaman is the most unusual. Shaman is the unusual. most unusual. It is okay. the most underused tournament class out of all of them. Yeah. Even though some players from time to time have had success with it, even somewhat recently. Yeah. I feel like the Mech Shaman is, you know, the safe bet, but knowing that he's a control player, likes really greedy stuff, maybe he thought, hey, I'll bring Midrange Shaman, bring it back. Maybe some control reincarnate Shaman. Something yeah. Something crazy slow. That's so much weapons. Yeah, this rogue hand is, is pretty ugly. Yeah, that heal bot was not what he was looking for. Passing with four mana. I mean, it works well with the hand. You're, you're going to lose a lot of life this game. <laughs> that Harrison's actually going to have a hard time going off because, I mean, two flurries, all the weapon enhancements, and a prep. He's probably going to flurry the turn that he plays all these enhancements. Like, Yeah. And it might be this turn. He might have to be, uh... He's got 22 damage if he's able to do everything all at once. So he's almost there, just not quite. That's crazy. Yeah, he doesn't have a two-charge dagger up, though. Yeah, he would need a two-charge dagger up. And even then, like... He'd need more mana more as well. More mana as well, yep. yeah. We can break it up into two, two sparts, because he's got two flurries. Yeah, he could get a flurry off with uh, everything except one of the oils, which would give him... Is that an 8 attack dagger? So 16 damage and an 8 damage flurry to clear the board. Wow. Take him to 11. But then, I mean, after that, what do you have? I mean, you're just sitting there with no guards. You got the top of your deck. So I guess maybe that's what we'll see. It's like he's going... Or, ooh, ooh. greedy flurry. Yeah, he's trying to... He's going to go oils. really low. I think this might indicate that he's running... Uh, South Sea deck. South Sea, yeah. 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 Because that's the only way he's going to have enough damage to finish the game. Right. Off that line. He knows he's not dead. There's no mana for a Gromash combo right now. And he's got a heal bot to stabilize soon. But I wouldn't be surprised to see these Black Axes just Knight. start going face. Controlling. Whoa. We have not seen the Black Knight in a really long time. There are, there are quite a few classes that the Black Knight just doesn't hit. Like, Grim Patient Warrior doesn't run that many taunts, does it? Uh, no. It runs like one Belcher. Yeah. One yeah. Belcher and maybe one of the Pirate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're hitting a pirate, and maybe black in, the, <laughs> in the rarer case, we talked about ghoul, maybe. Yeah, yeah that's not a good black knight yeah. there. <laughs> you're black knight in that, you're probably dead. <laughs> well, now you definitely have to heal bot here. You, you just have to respect Gromish, and he's going to dagger and hold it, and yeah. that's going to get the Harrison out, I think. From Koyuki, or from Kavi's perspective, you can't really be greedy with the Harrison. Because yeah, you, your opponent could have the other flurry and just kill you in a turn. Yeah, you can't leave any minions up either, usually. Now, if he did have the pirate, if he had just the absolute nuts, each one of those tinkers is worth nine. And then he gets two from the pirate, two from the dagger. So that'd be 22, so he's still seven off. With just ridiculous. the perfect hand. Well, now, now it's two off. Yeah. Yeah, because he's going to eviscerate phase. Yeah, I mean, it's just... The amount of things that need to happen for the rogue to win this game, just ridiculous. Especially with the shield maiden and the belcher in hand. Yeah, more yeah. and more armor, more and more taunts. Yeah, I don't see it happening. Yeah, usually the only way rogue wins this matchup is if they can get the shredder on four, maybe even coin the shredder on three and then have the other shredder after that. <laughs> yeah, shredder is one of those annoying cards for warrior because they can axe down the front part, but then the middle house take denies damage. the second part. No. <laughs> yeah. They're taking on an average, if you do the math, it's an average of 10 damage if you're weaponing a Shredder down today. Yeah, that's crazy. Really? Yep. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> it, it's weaponing average it over two turns. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's the Shredder with that gets axed right away, and then the minion that pops out gets an attack to face in. Yeah, and then you have to axe it again. So he's got a Nefarian. But the average is damage. three damage off a of Shredder, is it? It's two. I think it's 2.2 2 or something. Yeah, something like that. And so it's it comes out probably about nine. All right. Nine, nine, nine point. and a half. Yeah. 9.6 and you round up to 10, but 
Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, the viewers want information. It's, it's, right, it's right, good right. to go over everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, he's going to need a lot more damage than that here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the sap will make the warrior overdraw, but I think he's got all the cards he needs at this point. Head crack? <laughs> you head never know. Crack that that could get him. It's going to happen right now. Uh, maybe not next turn with the low thud probably coming out. But if you Lothab and Shredder, no, you'd what, have what to if, prep what the if sap. You, you belch or axe head crack? You set up for lethal. So, okay, let's think optimistically. Like, <laughs> what's the way you could win this game if you're As Koyuki? Rogue, because he uh, hasn't given up yet. Like, he's still competing to win. So, well, you definitely want to Lothab. How close are the computers together? You could try and, like, wiggle the plug out with your foot. <laughs> <laughs> so, the combo is, is 22 option. damage, so he needs to get 7. And so he needs to play both minions. Yeah, yeah. And now he doesn't have enough mana for the full combo. But he's but got another prep. Yeah. In the deck. He he's going to have it. to draw into more stuff. So he can't win next turn for sure. We know that. And of course, with taunts and armor, he probably can't win at all. But he doesn't know that. Well, if he swings at the shredder, maybe no. take some extra damage. Yeah, he's just going to go face with that head crack uh, with the cruel task. Yeah. Forcing the rogue to clear because he knows he can't die at 36. Oh, he gets wow. the prep. That's decent. Yeah, you got to go all in now, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you just you just play everything. You play everything. You put your cards on the table and say go. Yeah. Hmm. Koyuki agrees, and they both hit the Lothab. Yeah, that's a big Lothab. I think you'd rather have them hit. Either Separate both minions. the Shredder or separately, yeah. Yeah. Especially with, like, Brawl. Yeah. Big game, Hunter. Execute, Shield Slam. <laughs> assassinate. Ass yeah, yeah you gotta assassinate. watch out for the, the Warriors assassinating you. So, he doesn't gonna actually... assassinate Belcher. And uh, could he die anyway? It'd have to be a draw card probably sprint. It's sprint into sap deadly poison? No, he's used both deadly poison. Yeah, so if he was like thinking about that, he made that play really fast. No. But there's actually no way he can die anyway. He's going to need like a really and good that's shredder be, pop. It's yeah, not he, game he over. He actually needs a healer a taunt. That's taunt. a taunt. And that's a taunt? Is that enough? No. Oh, no, the head crack no, is going to kill him. The head crack will actually kill him. Yeah. Wow. You, uh, you axe through it. And then head crack. No, you, uh, you don't need to head crack, head unfortunately. Crack. I hope he does. I hope yeah, he head cracks. Yeah, you can just head crack for fun. Yeah, get him. He could execute it too. Uh, so many options. So you execute it, go face with slime, and then finish him with the head crack. Oh, perfect. perfect. And X. Oh, he's going to finish him with attack. the slime. Nice. Oh, okay. Okay, optimizing the kill. Yeah. I Good liked on it. Him. I liked it. Okay, he's like, dead. <laughs> I guess I was dead the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he fought pretty uh, valiantly, though. Yeah, and Koyuki didn't really have to reveal too many tech cards. He revealed the heal bot, which is yeah. sort of could be important later. Now, with the uh, with the warrior winning a game, can that actually hurt him? Like, doesn't the control warrior do pretty well against patron? Doesn't do pretty well against hunter? Well, winning never win actually yeah, hurts you, hurts. but what? it it can be yeah. a less important win. Mm -hmm. And in this setup, I think the warrior was pretty much going to get a win eventually. Yeah. So it's not like a match-defining win. Yeah. Um, yeah. Koyuki definitely still has a chance. The rogue was never going to, you know, be favored against Warrior in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, do you, do you go with the with the dice roll on on the next one? I would go with the dice roll. You go with the dice roll. I'm too? of the school no, of thought. Uh, you just random every time. I like uh, trying to think. Like I know that it's all random. Thinking is overrated, especially. Okay. I think here. there's definitely like behavioral hints you can pick up on, patterns you can see within what people do. If they're not dice rolling, then I definitely feel like I can get some sort of edge. Well, what I've seen at least is yeah, what you mentioned. Uh, most players who lose just stick to that yeah. deck. That that seems to be a thing. And if it happens to be a thing here. Uh, well, let's, let's think about that. How would that turn out? So if you expect your opponent to stick with Rogue, you would go with the deck you think is better against Rogue. I don't know which one that is in his case. He has shaman, a hunter, hunter and a shaman. Yeah, yeah. probably I would, neither. I would expect it's the hunter deck. Hunter is generally pretty good against Rogue if you're not running the really heavy version with like Savannah High main mm -hmm. as your main way to win because that dies to sap. 
Okay. Yeah, he's stuck with Rogue, the and he went with Hunter. So yeah, but maybe that's... there are mind games. See, going it's on. not just the dice roll. There's definitely things. You can also... I would have dice rolled. You would have dice rolled. Sometimes, since you sit right across from the player, you can see him. If they just like do one click, you're like, <laughs> obviously he's requeuing up. But if it's two clicks, he must have switched. Oh. See, then you kind of wow. know. Next level. You just spoiled it though. Like you should have just kept that to yourself, so you could be. They're oh, like, yeah. next time, they're like blasting white noise in there. Like you can't hear anything. You can't okay. hear the click, but you can like see their mouse hand gonna, sometimes. Gonna watch. You can okay. see the, the tendons in their arm as yeah, you know, yeah. Things. You try yep. and I'm read just it. saying, as a player that played <laughs> in the land last last uh, season, yeah, I did none of this. I just okay. just random it every time. You gotta take any advantage where you can get it, though. You gotta try and yep. maybe you do. It's not like Dr. <laughs> Boom's going to be merciful to you. Yeah, you, know? you got to try and figure out where you can get your edge within the rules, of course. Okay. No cheating, but no like, cheating. that's definitely not cheating to just watch your opponent and study him, study okay. the enemy, learn from them to destroy them sort of thing. Yeah. Pro tips from Firebat. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. None of that online, and uh, both of these players have only ever competed online. Well, that's Koyuki's true. Is that true? I don't Koyuki's think that's true. been at events. Yeah, he's been at events. Yeah, he's also from other card games, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yes. pretty sure he's played many other. He games. plays lots a lot of, of other card games. Yeah, Kavi, so. not so much. He said, he said he actually wasn't too hyped for Hearthstone when it came out. Uh, he was a big player of the Warcraft series. Oh, but tried it out and loved it. So sweet. Come all the way here. Yeah. All right. Well, we see the Shredder and the Hunter that does uh, the that coin does for the road. Tell you kind of what it is. Uh, uh, no, not really. I, I have no idea what type of hunter this there is. There are two different lists with the Shredder. Yeah, okay. no, no, there's three. It's in every list. There's even <laughs> there's hybrid hunter that doesn't run high mains. That no, it's runs not shredders. on the face list. It's not well, in the face list. It's just that one. It's not in. But it's in the three other ones. I've got a face list with Shredder. All right, so it's even in the face list. Okay, sometimes. It's, it, we see what's better. All right, it's, it's the slow one. Yeah, slow one. Yeah, slow. <laughs> slow one's not that great against Rogue. Is not it? that great. You, you get cleared, especially if seeing double blade flurry. Yeah, it's pretty obvious what type of Rogue it is. But it's hunter. Anything can happen. Sometimes yeah. you can draw the perfect yeah. curve, and if they don't have the one thing to clear one of your minions, you're just going to be able to deal enough damage for your yeah, burn. To kill yeah, but right now it looks like the, the rogue <laughs> has, a, has a lot of things to clear yeah, every right. one of your minions. Yeah, the right. rogue's definitely sitting pretty. Uh, that's what it always feels bad playing a knife juggler. Yeah, going into, into a the rogue coin. With the coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you were really observant, you kn you knew he kept a card. Yeah. And that card's probably backstab or SI. Yeah, it's, it's got to be their backstab prep or SI. Yeah. Yep. So he's just going to freeze freezing trap. trap. Wow. That's interesting. Trying to play Maybe the baiting games, a yeah. snake trap here. Like, yeah, baiting a snake trap so then he coin SIs this instead. Ooh. That would be really good. That'd be good. sick if that happened. Yeah, but if the coin SI actually happens, that is a sick play. Because, like, if you're Koyuki here and you dagger this and it's snake trap, you're really upset because it's not like you can blade flurry. Well, you blade play the next turn. You take three damage. Yeah, oh, but it is. go for wow, it. Wow, he wow. baited the coin SI. That is. This is a play like. That's really next level. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> I I'm really excited about this play. I know not very many in the people in the audience or anybody else cares, but that was really <laughs> intense. Because the freezing trap also really lines up intense. really well with the SI. Yeah, this lines up perfectly with the SI. This is disgusting. It's like an outplay that he didn't really even like have to do anything for. Yeah, that was sick. Wow. <laughs> Feels like Koyuki almost like outthought himself. Like he was so worried that Ka he like respects Kabi so much that he assumes like why would Kabi just throw a freezing trap on two? It is it is pretty interesting. I think a lot of people watching probably just don't really care. But yeah, I was just I was it, thinking about that the whole time. You guys no talking. stupid. Yeah, that was so like, of course he did that. I can see both the hands. That's what I would do when I would see both the hands. Of course. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people, like myself included, maybe, would just go for the juggler there like, and hope they don't have it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I would do. Because like, you need to push damage. Yeah. yeah. And see, like, Koyuki now, what's your play? Like, you have to, yeah. you have to inefficiently answer this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just a really small play that led to a really important result. Yeah, he's setting up to be able to prep this Because that Leak's going to get six. Yeah. Yeah. He's setting up to be able to prep Eviscerate and play Shredder and yep. clear the, the minion as well. So now the knife juggler comes Pretty good comes top deck. In. Yeah. I think otherwise you were actually playing that chicken. Uh, you'd probably just hear power. You think so? Yeah, it's two damage versus a dagger and yeah. one damage the next turn, which is two. Mm. But you can always play chicken. Especially <laughs> on five. Like, he has nothing to do next turn. <laughs> 
Chicken also enables kill command later. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's true. It's, it's, it's a cheap damage. beast. Yeah. If he draws Houndmaster, which you might play. Yeah. It's an easy way to enable that. Um, so what can you do here? It's too bad you don't have five. Yeah. Well, with the freezing trap out of the way, I do kind of like trying to get the shredder out as early as possible. Yeah, you can't really do a good flurry here at all. So. <laughs> I think Prep Eviscerate Dagger Shredder is still like the line we set up for last time. Like, yep. It doesn't feel the greatest, but you need to catch up on tempo, and that's one of the only ways to do it. Yeah, you'll be ahead. And he, he's going to need to rely on top decking something to combo the other SI, I guess, at that. Oh, he's going to wow. take the slower line. But this is good as well. Seems fine. Now he has something else yeah. to combo the SI in his this hand. This is yeah. better against the hand that Kabi has because Kabi has a really slow hand unless he top decks something. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that great. Yeah, yeah but if Kabi would have been able to just play on curve here, it would have been really devastating. So there's the chicken. Yuki. Chicken has been played. Yep. And it is going to die immediately. It's going to die really quick. It's dead. It's, it's basically <laughs> gone. So, do you flurry this turn? Another prep. I, yeah, I feel like you can go ahead and yeah, you prep, prep flurry and play the five mana SI. No, no, no prep SI yeah, and then yeah, flurry. Of course. Yeah, of course you SI before the flurry. Yeah. And we know Kabi still looking for a play on turn six. It's definitely debatable whether or not you want to play the five mana or the three mana one because redaggering is oh, fairly yeah, yeah. important. That's true. Especially I think with I like the flurry. flexibility though, because. I like playing the five man. Yeah, the it's five just, mana it's just one so is just so dead otherwise. It's, yeah. it's kind of just better because next turn, if you have to dagger, well, it's not directly better because you might want to dagger and not SI next turn. And it's pretty likely that Kabi does get something to play because he gets he gets he a get, draw yeah. off the web spin and then he gets an actual draw. Yeah, he should have. Maybe it's another so. chicken, though. Oh, no, that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is really good. Turbo. That lined out really well. That card is considered pretty terrible, but uh, it's, it's really not. It, if there's just off of way better spinner, options than constructed. It's actually yeah. pretty good because yeah. you can play it right before their Belcher turn, mm -hmm. and it lines up really well. All right. A sap, but no Savannah High Man. Nope. Just gonna have a Doctor Boom next turn. Yeah, Doctor Boom is not the greatest thing to set. It generally comes back. Yeah. You can do like the super Some tempo turn here. Options. Just sap the five four and trade. No. SI. <laughs> Oh, okay. You can get your other SI frozen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he just got unfrozen. <laughs> Too you bad. Freezing him again? <laughs> yep. I feel like Koyuki is playing towards a sap draw with this play, or a sprint draw with this play. Like, because the cards in his hand are not enough to deal 28. Like, yeah, so he off needs the to top get, every turn. If he gets sprint next turn, he can play SI in the same yeah. turn, sort of thing. He's playing to draw sprint. If he doesn't draw sprint, he probably loses, and sometimes rogue matches come to that. Well, he has the sap here, so he can sap Dr. Boom, but Dr. Boom's going to come back with more friends after that. <laughs> hey, lights out. That's always really depressing. Really yeah, it never is. gets better. But you still have the blade flurry, so hey, lights in terms out. of like board development, sap isn't the worst thing. Well, you can actually clear it. You lose everything. That'd be ugly. Yeah. Gonna oh, go he's going to go for it. Yeah, you can't afford to keep sapping it. He'll he die. Oh, oh, Captain's wow. Parrot. It's all right. It'll take a four four damage bomb. Yeah, I'm just going to die Guaranteed. anyway, right? All right. Second flurry gone. That's important to note as well. He still has all the weapon buffs left, but no flurries anymore. So those four, lost a huge three. Oh, wow. man. That, that's that Captain's Parrot had one job, <laughs> and it didn't do it. Yeah. Wow, that is a lot of damage coming in. Yep, that's basically it. Yeah, that's uh, he can put damage. his opponent to to seven and kill him next turn. He can just go tall strider, quick shot, face, bing, mm -hmm. and then your opponent has to draw heal bot. And yeah. even then, like you can just quick shot next turn. Uh, can you? Yeah, I guess yeah, you, can. you can. So there's the sprint, which he definitely Ooh. needed, but now he can't heal. He needs earthen ring, right? He needs earthen ring. And there wow. it is. Yeah. So he's. Barely alive. And with a with a heal button in his deck, he still kind of has a chance. He's, He's got to trade his entire board guess, again. Yeah. Which, I mean, you're definitely going to do. You can't just leave five up and be dead to any three damage. Yeah, especially while not setting up lethal. <laughs> so, Koyuki's new out to win the game is basically draw heal bot and then... No, you, I think you might go face here. Mm. Because you're out of range of one kill command. No, you're not. Yeah, oh, you're, are you? Oh, you're you would be, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I only play around one kill command usually, but 
in these circumstances, it doesn't make very much sense to go face because mm -hmm. he's going to set you so low that you're just going to get hero power down. Yeah, anyway, you don't have two turn lethal. You yeah, don't you have three turn exactly. lethal. Like, oh, oh he's dead. he doesn't oh, heal. Okay. He's dead. He's going to take a slight risk. Yeah, I would take the same risk. Like, you yeah, don't normally play Yeah, this feels pretty realistic. Um, you're going to have to kill your, your Which, opponent eventually. They're it, just going to keep pinging you for two. Yeah. Which is one of the advantages of hiding that quick shot there. By oh. hiding that quick shot, it makes oh, yeah. Koyuki not want to heal. Definitely does not telegraph. I, I am to, killing you next I have turn. to say that this is, like, after after we've talked about what might go down in the tournament and that kind of stuff, this is exactly what I expected, you know? Yeah, you that expected The, the non-hunter, non-warrior can't win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, now it's going to be non-hunter, non-warrior versus non-hunter, non-warrior, most likely. Probably. Oh. I mean, at this point, whatever Koyuki picks doesn't yeah. really matter. He's yeah. Some Might as well stick say, with it. No, there, there's, yeah. no, actually, at this point, not you, only you should stick with your you, deck. You actually should you stick with your deck opponents. because you have. Yeah, you have to win with all three, but you don't reveal to the other your future yep. opponents what you have. This is double arsenal. elimination, so yeah. you yeah. want to keep stuff hidden. But anyone loses here, they're, they're still uh, they still got a decent chance to take the tournament. Sure. So yep. he's going to queue back up. I the actually road. lost my first match last last season. Got second place still. So there you go. It's doable. Yeah. Anything can happen. Silent Storm lost in groups. Won. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's not there over you yet, go. even not if you lose over. your first match. Absolutely not. But he hasn't lost yet. There's nope. still the Shaman, which uh, <laughs> a lot of people believe is a very, very, Oh, yeah, very that is weak his weak class. link. Yes, yeah, Shaman, so, on paper. Not only is like considered a weak class, it's actually not Warrior, and or it's hunter. not Hunter. Yeah. So wow. It's so insane. So Koyuki the weaknesses still has are stacking Warrior up. and Hunter. Yeah. And he's going to go with Hunter, surprisingly. Still, uh, hunter. Wow, that is a surprise. Maybe like a morale-based thing. Just wants to get a win on the board. Yeah, Perhaps. still want to get 3 0'd. This is almost always a good matchup for the Hunter. Yeah, I don't think there's any version of Card <laughs> yeah. Shaman that's no, just, just look at Kayuki's it. side. Like, Rogue, Warrior, Hunter. Like, what, what are bad matchups against the Shaman? Uh, None. Nothing as nothing. far as I. Well, that's yeah. the reason nobody brings Shaman. <laughs> if, like, if, it's, yeah. if it's Control Warrior, then Regular Shaman is very, very good against it. But, regular uh, Shaman mm. beats Control Warrior, but. Does it Not be a lot of people else? are bringing Control Warrior, right? Well, they, we've seen it. two Control Warriors already. Yes, we've actually only seen Control Warrior, right? Yeah, wow. we, have, we have yet to see a patron. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. Everybody's overthinking it. Mm. Just, just get in there. Getting in there is really Everyone good. get in here? Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. That deck is good. Patron did pretty well at WCA a few days ago. I think and on ladder. Pretty good and deck. in most other tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been in every single one, right? Yeah, in every another, another thing is like, of course, yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of frustrating to play against just a super powerful deck all the time, but I think I think Grim Patron Warrior is just cool. It is really cool. It's really Max fun. Shaman. Yeah. Okay. Max Shaman. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind. Like I, I wouldn't mind every player playing Grim Patron Warrior in this tournament. Well, uh, I kind of would. Uh, really? I, I like but we haven't variants. seen it in everybody, yeah. so... I would like to see it once today. I think Hunter <laughs> is going to be the most represented like mm. deck slash class. So that seems to be the case so far. Yeah. Hunter's pretty good. As it turns out. I have a lot of experience with that. <laughs> Mech Shaman, one of those decks that can win against anything and can lose against anything. Yeah, I think Koyuki just kept that whole hand. He's just like, look, a curve. Yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that Kabi's still waiting for his opponent to mulligan before he does, <laughs> but his opponent just four capped. That's yeah. one of the worst feelings in tournaments. Yeah. If they keep it's, all four of their cards, you know you're dead. You feel a little bit better because you're up duo, but I've been up duo and lost a lot, so Mech Shaman is definitely a deck that can get swept. Yeah. You can just get Dr. Boom, double fire elemental every starting hand. That's, that's interesting. I, I never picked up on that. So if you, if you keep your whole hand, as it, it's it's as if you're waiting to yeah, see the ball. Yeah, it doesn't you're show anything. Okay. Then you're so. just sitting there like, <laughs> oh my god, did he really? Very the whole common time? Very yeah. common practice in tournaments is you wait to mulligan Absolutely. before Absolutely. your opponent does. That way, you, you know, just know the strength case, of their okay, hand. Yeah. So an example is if you have Knife Juggler as a hunter, versus a warrior, you could keep it if you see them pitch their whole hand because it's less likely they have fiery war axe. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they keep two cards, it's almost 100% they have war yeah. axe. Yeah. And we actually see uh, Kabi had an earth shock on the mulligan, pitched it and got another one. So he's playing two, which is pretty uncommon for the mech shaman. Yeah, definitely. It's gonna maybe pay gonna off. Gonna get some him. value here, yeah. Wow, the rock blade is pretty good. 
Yeah, as uh, opting to just develop. Chooses to develop. Yeah, that's strange because the knife juggler is just gonna kill it for free. Yeah, he gets to kill the one two for free. Guess he's just racing. Wow, that's a pretty good tactic too. Now he can quick shot the he three two. He can quick shot and, and develop, develop something. Yeah. And the mech shaman yeah, does not like to clear your. Minions. The quick shot beats uh, any other option from animal companion. Sometimes animal companion being so strong and so random. You often consider taking a chance because one of the three options is just better. But in this yeah, case, right. even that, it isn't. Now yeah, we'll do, do tournament players tend to go for the like highest expected value play. So it's just like, okay, I know this is a good play. This could be, but let's go with the safe option. Mm -hmm. well, with that kill command and the Shredder into Lothab play, I feel like uh, Koyuki's actually in a really good position just to ignore right. the Shredder and start racing. Koyuki's also because in Kabe's race. in a particularly bad position with two Fire Elementals. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. Like, Mech Shaman can get those draws where they don't hit all of their early game drops. And, can and get the dagger really goes clunky. face. I think it's that's fine. Lead in the charge. If, like, the the Shredder survives in some way or another anyway, you have to you have to kill a, a bigger threat than the Leper Gnome. That was a really important top deck. And he's gonna go face. He's gonna go yeah. face. Well, the race is on. How do you race this? I I don't know. Well, that, that is the strategy going in. Like yeah, Mech right. Shaman Mech against Shaman Hunter, is you a face class. The Hunter. You yeah. have to race them. Yeah. You're hoping to hit Doomhammer in time. The issue really is the Shaman card. hero power sucks in yeah. this matchup. It's a liability 75 percent of the time. Oh, he's opting to not play Lotha. He's instead gonna go with the Glyph. Just gonna get more damage and, down. Yeah. It's kind of awkward going into Ooh. next turn though. That's well, not a very good one. You can actually clear this. Yeah, I'd, I'd, oh, I would man. not recommend you're clearing. You're so far ahead on damage. Yeah, yeah you, you have to go face. Like, you have a kill command in hand, and you're setting him to 11. You really wanted Huffer yeah. or Leoc there, because yeah. this just dies flat out. But, I mean, now he has to fire early that. He probably has to start trading down. Like, yeah. And you're here part of those two every turn. Mech Shop doesn't play heals. And that's in his juggler. He needs, like, a Vitality Totem or something. Yeah, he's already at 9 if he kills the Leper Gnome. Oh, you have to kill and the then juggler. Seven more after the bow. He's hit. thinking if he can lethal next turn if he went face, and there's no card in his deck that does that much damage. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be enough. Right? <laughs> that's basically game. like over the next two turns he's got him. Mm -hmm. um, you can play around Lothab. I think you just Lothab. I, no, I think you just kill command face. Then he's dead no matter what. They don't play heals. No, but next turn you can just do beast kill command here. No, but Lothab. <laughs> That's like your only way to lose is if you yeah, get low thebbed. If you get low thebbed. Yeah. So oh. if you kill command face, you win. But does Max Shaman run, face, it does run low thebbed sometimes? Isn't it? Max Shaman it does, always, yeah. runs it runs always? always runs oh, low okay. thebbed. That's the standard list anyway. If you kill command face there, there's no way you can lose. Yep. So uh, So you're saying that was a misplay? Uh. Yeah, he could be outed by low thebbed. There's still probably no way he loses. Yeah, he can't lose now. It's like you said, the beast kill command is it. But... Like, let's say he did have Lotheb here. You and, go to five. And he could potentially push if he six. Lothebs and sets up lethal, then that would have been game. Mm -hmm. So. And would he have? Yeah. Uh, he would have had to top deck something as well. Yeah, he would have. Had to. Yeah. Well, so. Hunter takes it. Koyuki gets a win on the board. Uh, I'm sure he's happy about that. I don't think Koyuki is an emotional player at all. No, doesn't seem like it. No. Yep. <laughs> he's but, been uh, through his fair share of card game tournaments. Yeah. But it's, knows, it's nice to be on the upswing. You feel yeah. at least a bit confident. I'm yeah. sure Koyuki's been down 0-2 a lot. Like, this is not unfamiliar territory. He doesn't look too upset. Yeah, he knows he has a chance against Mech Shaman. I mean, yep. like, anything is possible. Especially with Rogue, often has a lot of tools to clean up the early game with backstabs, SIs. They can be fairly favorable against Mech Shaman. I, yeah, we were all surprised to not see the Rogue deck. I mean, it seems... Seems about as strong as Hunter, or anything, really. Yeah, seems stronger than Hunter. You get to hide what kind of Hunter you have if you lose. Yeah, but I would have liked not, to see Rogue Not only as well. that, like, he wasn't playing that fast of a Hunter. So, right. Yeah, it was pretty slow. Yeah, yeah, so that doesn't seem like that great of a matchup at all. The version of Hunter you have is actually pretty relevant in your matches, mm -hmm. especially because of, like, the secrets. Like, knowing your opponent only has Freezing Trap is a huge deal, because yeah. you can make yeah. plays that you normally can't make. Absolutely. So, so, of course, it sucks to think, like, if you lose, you don't want to lose, but it can you happen. Yeah. So, so you now, have to think like that. If he queues up the rogue now and then loses with the rogue, he just gave away free information, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he still has the same percent chance to win the series, except for like... Oh, he's past the speed bumps. I guess, here but he still has to win with the rogue. Oh, Here's the rogue. We're going to get to see that happen here. So yeah. if the rogue can take a win, 
and the warrior is indeed patron. Koyuki's suddenly in a good spot. No, uh, I think even control warrior is fine against. I think Shaman. control warrior is maybe not that great though. I think it's better. You got like shield blocks and stuff, and brawl sometimes can be. Good. Shield block doesn't usually stop you from losing. You just need some early game presence. Yeah, yeah. You need war X. E either yeah. either warrior deck. You if he weapons. doesn't have war X, he's For dead. Sure. <laughs> oh really? You think it's that big of a deal? You think you can't win but without war X? The axes are really can. important. Because at, at the same time, I feel like shaman is one of those classes that just draws like. Yeah, terribly. It, it, sometimes. If the shaman draws good, mm -hmm. you need the war X. Yeah. If okay. the shaman doesn't well, the have shaman that great of a draw, draw well, no it doesn't really what. matter. Yeah, yeah then, it, then I guess like you win. They drew poor. <laughs> it's mech shaman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mech decks are really based on getting good openers. So they've got like cog mm -hmm. is really good, mech warper or double mech warper is insane, and even just, the great. whirling zapomatic yeah. is really insane too. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just coin whirling zapomatic, and you can't kill it, and then you're dead. So here, yeah. the Cogmaster. <laughs> you know about that. Yeah, it's like really somebody <laughs> on turn three. Yep. I think everyone, uh, everyone who knows her has seen that. Yeah. So it's Mech Shaman, very powerful sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Not all the time. This is a good hand, though, for the Mech Shaman. Yeah. It didn't get yeah. much better, though, it with got that a, It got a little worse, actually. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's, Cogmaster's going to get backstabbed. Oh, he's ready uh, for that oh, Van Cleef. Ooh, Van Cleef. Imagine he went second. That would have been a backstab coin Van Cleef. Yeah, this is actually interesting how much he'll go for that Van Cleef and then get her shot. <laughs> yeah, that could be a huge deal. Spider Tank's a really good draw, too, because now he can just go coin Spider Tank into Spider Tank. Wow, he's got backstab SI for the Spider Tank next turn. Maybe he, I would consider I daggering. I would dagger that, yeah. yeah. You only take two extra damage. Yeah. Because almost no max have more than four health. I mean, but he has the deadly poison in hand, so he's setting up for deadly Van Cleef on. Uh, it's not. Turn it's not four. just that. It seems sure. like he should have tried to kill the Cogmaster just to protect his SI seven. Yeah, that's yep. why I would have tried to kill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's trying to set up for the deadly Van Cleef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is better against uh, Anoyatron. Wait, why? Oh, oh just gonna go for the Van Cleef. I guess it's a four four. It does contest the board. Okay, so he's gonna set up for the. It is in line with his earlier play. So. Yeah, this seems better actually. Yeah. Cogmaster is a pretty good draw here. And will he trade Base. to protect? Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. What are what you are talking about? S M Orc. <laughs> All right. That, that answer is that. Face. So he can clear here, and he can save uh, two health. I yeah. think going face was still correct. Uh, yeah, it was. So, turns out going face pretty good. Mm -hmm. Get your extra damage in. I like the Deadly Poison SI. Yeah. Yep. I don't see anything good, better. Definitely. You could try and save, try and sort of set up a Thalnos Flurry, but it seems like it'd just take too much damage. Yeah. He's not going to trade with your minions anyway, so. Yeah, that would just develop a weaker board is all. And yeah. this leaves you with the Deadly Poison Dagger. It's perfect and sequencing. Three, three. Yeah, perfect sequencing to avoid damage. And like we were talking about earlier, the South Sea deckhand is in his rogue list. So kind of going back to his play in the warrior game makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The spider tank, rock biter clear, or just the yeti? I think I like the yeti better. Yeah. Yeah, me as well. The rock biter functions as a lot of damage in the mech shaman if you control Oh, like, that is hammer. a top deck. Wow. Yeah. I think you clear clear the Yeti. You can even play South Sea. I think you do play South Sea. Yeah. It's yeah. not like the Shaman has many board yeah, clears. Yeah, it's not like you need to save it. No Lightning Storm or anything. Uh, you're, you're going really low on cards, but that's fine. Oh, you can armor plating to play on Rock Biter. Yeah, you saw the hesitation hey, last turn. Maybe out. you think it, he has a Rock Biter. Or you can save that kind of like for a combo card. Mm -hmm. Sure. I like the combo save. Yeah. Okay. This just pushes two more damage, and this is a race matchup eventually. Like if you don't I, no, kill the I, I shaman, I think it's actually gone from that. I don't think it's a race matchup for the rogue. I think for the rogue, it's a control matchup, and with the armor plating, you can get a better trade. Well, the shaman deck does play stuff like doomhammer, crackle, lava burst. They so started. if you don't kill them quick enough, they will eventually draw the damage to kill you. Doomhammer yeah. is especially important. That's a far eventually right now, though. It is yeah. a very far eventually. This was a great early game for the rogue. Yeah, they've switched to controlling the board now, as we saw by the Rock Biter trade there, instead of saving it for the damage. Oh, oh my, my god. god. What a plague that card's been. And there's the armor plating. <laughs> the armor plating value. Oh, the value. <laughs> yeah. He's just going to pass on the dagger for the flurry. No Harrison, probably in the Shaman. Oh, there's oh, the new Okay. 
So that's 16 damage over four turns. Not anymore. Oh, he kills the Nomos. Gonna, gonna trade. Interesting. He is really low on cards. I might have killed the pirate instead. Yeah, I don't, definitely kill the pirate. Yeah, I don't think why you give, him, give a card? him the card? Like cards are a big that's deal. That's interesting, because like that drew him into a Lothab instead of and just Shredder. Shredder. Yeah, well, you can't yeah like one. just assuming, just like mathematically, not even just yeah. what happened. You're giving him one extra draw to draw into a minion. Yeah, and on average, any minion on your deck is better than Thalnos. Yeah. Like, so, and not only that, like you know, he had nothing left. Yeah, you know he probably like that isn't going to draw. That was a turn six backstep spare part play. So now yeah. you can see. You know he has no minions. <laughs> yeah. I just well keep him at no minions. Yeah. Koyuki's going a lot more aggressive now. Yeah. Kind of just senses that the shaman will have inevitability with the doom hammer, and he needs to kill him. Doctor Boom, but he's overloaded, so he cannot play the doctor. That Anoyotron's going to block five damage. Six actually, but is it? Unless he top decks something. Yeah, it is. So really big. Oh, wow. I don't think that's played, though. I think he might. Do you set up lethal without playing it? No. Yeah, if you don't set up lethal without playing it, then maybe it's worth But you can sprint into things You're going like... to have to sprint this game. No, I, I just... Well, you can sprint next turn to get either... Uh... I just think you, you threaten lethal with two cards. Like, yeah. you, you might just sprint into an eviscerate. Yeah, or deadly poison, right? Does that work? You could. Nine, ten. And your yes. shaman, yeah, shaman's yeah, probably not going to well. trade, right? Yeah. Like, I think the safe play is just to, to sneaky sprint next turn. Yeah, I like that. Oh, Koyuki's going to sprint this turn. He would have hit the eviscerate. Yeah. Yeah. Not much else. Uh, he's going to have a, an oil flurry next turn, which is pretty nice. But he's, he's still got lethal if uh, Lothab is not removed. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Lava burst. So... That kind of sucks because you have got to play 13 Lava Burst. Max. So imagine if Doctor Boom was like a Crackle mm -hmm. spell power totem. Yeah. Told you. Told you you could kill him. But well, I mean, you have to boom here. If you well, boom, no, don't you, you lose? Have, you know you're dead if you boom. You have the Doom Hammer applying pressure. Like a Rock Fighter off the top could be okay. What it takes. I think Lava Burst is it. Yeah. So I, think, yeah. I think you have to lob burst the 5-4. You're Hopefully. dead to 6 damage, which is an oil or uh -oh. something plus something. Yeah, so he's, he's, gonna he's not risk. playing around oil. He's saying, if you have oil, good job. He's got and two. he's got two. <laughs> he has all I actually, good, I like the boom play, though. I don't. Like, you, you set up lethal off your top deck most off likely. Off your top deck. Woo. I mean, you run only damage in your deck. Yeah. So... I think it's a fair... You run a lot of minions in that deck. You've drawn a lot of minions. I like showing just the one oil, just to make him regret yeah, it even more. He's already shown the double oil. Yeah, he's yeah no, I just mean just to make him regret it even more. Mm -hmm. Be like, man, he only had just enough. Should have lava bursted. I mean, there's a very high likelihood, I think, that you're still threatening lethal if you lava burst the Lothan. I mean... Expecting six damage from six or seven cards is... <laughs> it like, had to be Rock you, you Fighter, expect, right? Yeah, or a you high have crackle. to know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I think the chance that you win with a top deck is better than Chances than of him not hitting any damage. Yeah. yeah. He needed oil, though, not just any damage. It was pretty grim in any case. Oil, a combination. He a combination drew, of two damage cards or just oil. How many cards did he draw? He had six in hand. Six. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. I'm not I, saying <laughs> the odds are good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah this was a, a bad situation. And so yeah. now we're two two. We're evened out. And it, Koyuki it did, it did go to all five in, games in theory favored predicted. in this matchup. Yeah, yeah. Warriors, I definitely think is favored. And Kabi's in a spot that I've been in a lot, and you're not feeling good at this point. Like yeah, it's, no. it's a bad feeling when you were up two zero in your first yeah, match. You're, you're, like you're playing not warrior, not ready hunter, to get and off you're to a up good against start. warrior or hunter. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. He, because before this tournament, like we talked about the third deck thing. He was like, okay, I think Max Shaman's pretty good. And then you get in this situation, you're like, Max Shaman wasn't too good. Yeah, definitely <laughs> wasn't. Ooh, food. <laughs> that, that food's hidden. I don't know what you're talking about. It's invisible? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we are about to get into the final game here. Uh, how one-sided do you think it is? Like, I, I agree. I think most warrior versions do beat the shaman, but I don't think it's a, that nothing that yeah. of a deal. Nothing is one-sided against mech shaman. Mm -hmm. It's a deck that can do anything, especially if it's the fell reaver version. Yeah, because we just, haven't seen that though. Yeah, we haven't seen any fell reaver, and we have seen additional earth shocks. Yeah, earth shocks. So uh, one additional earth shock. I feel like adding earth shocks is cutting power and adding consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which 
I don't like in the mech shaman. I like just raw power and hope. Yeah. You like just just, just hope. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the mech shaman way, I guess. Grim patron boys. I with like, a shield block. I like going second. And a gnomish. As the as the shaman player. That's not a good hand, but... Yeah, coin out Whirling Zapmatic, yep, no you answer. Just, you too just much gotta free go damage. For it. And right now, the, the only answer is inefficient. Yeah. He gets two draws for the axe. First one's a miss. All right. Wait, this Whirling Zapmatic. can't deal with it, kind of. Oh, he's probably uh, gonna, he's gonna play. Yeah, he's gonna go for the Neutron. The but the, then the that makes play. the um, the whirlwind inner rage play pretty good. Yeah, because yeah, then it it also has the utility of taking off the shield for your weapon on four. Yeah. So I think he will do that. Interesting. What do you guys think about the? Uh, we saw off the mulligan, the no mission vendor, and the shield block. What yeah. Do you guys think about those in Patron Warrior? Uh, I know that Koyuki's teammates with the rat, who has done self-proclaimed. Almost a thousand games of Patron Warrior, <laughs> and I'm sure they work together for this tournament. So I know that they have a lot of logic behind their decisions, and it's more of like I've heard it described as more of a solitaire version of the deck, where you are just playing to draw your combo pieces and kill them, okay. as opposed to play minions, get them to stick, and play more of a value game. So it could Makes be more sense. of a fast comboy version. All right, looks like he's going to go to, to the full board clear here with the Whirlwind yeah. and the Inner Rage. I know the, um, basically how you beat a Grim Patron Warrior is you just pressure them too much. So even though the Warrior has answers here because he's burning these combo pieces, he might just be giving away his win condition. Yeah, he's losing uh, the Battle Rage value, which is really important here. But he has the Death Bite in hand to act as another Whirlwind. We do see yeah. the Fell Reaver. Wow. Um, Kabi's just relying on top decking one of his four drops. I think he has three in his deck. Spider tank wouldn't be that bad either. So, you know, five outs off the top have a really nice play. All right, so Frothing Berserker off the top. It's not terrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't die immediately to the weapon. It needs the weapon and something a little more. I mean, this Fell Reaver could actually take over the game. Yeah, he doesn't have an answer yet. Oh, God. This Cogmaster, not so much. No. Uh, uh, I should have crackled first for sure. If he was going to, which now he decides not to, and uh, that ended up rough. being kind of sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he didn't think too much through that, and kind of caught himself. He also revealed that he did have a direct damage spell in his hand by pointing it. Yeah, I would like to take the the battle rage here, just bump off the one two, and then take the two cards off battle rage. Yeah. Um, the other option is to set up the Despite. That way you can just Emperor cleanly next turn. But the Battle Rage gets you more Emperor value. Uh, which is actually sort of important. You are in a defensive position, but you do have to win the game eventually. And with Lotheb and Boom and Fell Whoa. Reaver. Don't take only one card. Ooh. One card. He did not want the other one. No. That's Well, he doesn't want the, the he doesn't want the Frothing Berserker to die to the to weapon. To die to the power yeah. yeah. Seems so, fair. I there is he thinks there's some merit. There's nice. merit to it, but you're basically giving up a card to save your Berserker. It's so interesting to me how, like, good. Battle Rage is such a dominant card in Warrior now. And Battle Rage has had, like, the biggest, like, one of the biggest up and down swings of any card in well, Hearthstone. Well, the old Warrior decks didn't have that many minions to put on the field. And now there's a minion that can function as six minions. Yeah. And, so. like, the... the Damaging your own minions part was kind of hard to do back then. Yeah. And the card sucked back then. Like, Battle Rage was three mana. Yeah. I think well, it was two I mean, mana, and then three mana, and then back to two mana. And when it was back to two mana, everyone played it and realized the Warriors still wasn't very good with it. Hmm. And they dropped it. And now Warriors really good because of Grim Patron. Yeah. It works. Now it's back in the game. Yeah. That's a good card. When it goes up and down through, like, a lot of different uh, swings in Hearthstone. Koyuki actually already has the combo. Yeah, and he goes to Emperor and takes And he has phase. a Cruel. Yeah. Which is insane. He's taking a lot of heat, though. Uh, that was the expense of playing <laughs> that Emperor. That is some damage. Took 13 that turn. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think he can clear that. <laughs> yeah, he can clear. He can clear this board. Can he kill his opponent, maybe? Mm, probably not. Probably not. I think he's got 10 damage from hand, and it's going to add another 1 damage to the frothing. So that's 20. Bonus of 26, so, so it's close. Not quite. Oh, we just saw the remaining uh, Wind Fury cards in the deck gone. 
the yeah. Uh, Rock Doom Hammer as well. Got yeah, the Doom Hammer okay. and the other uh, Whirling Zapmatic. Just uh, yeah. Zapmatic's not a big deal. Left the game. <laughs> Crackle might actually be the best it. card left in his deck, besides like Rag potentially. Lava but he might not have time. No, I, I think it's. I think it's close to over. Like, yeah, I mean, you can clear here. This is like the crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, the shaman's out of gas, except for Doctor Boom. <laughs> Yeah, You're going to get a gonna... lot of patrons. Dr. And Boom doesn't hit. really help against patrons. That is a lot of damage. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this frothing is actually just going to solo him. He cannot play Dr. Boom. Yeah. Excellent turn, by the way. Yeah, that was really <laughs> well positioned and ordering and everything. I think, everything he, I think he did that perfect, yeah. 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 And it's not easy. Like, uh, there, yeah. are, there are cards and decks in, in Hearthstone uh, that are easy. Yeah. Like yeah. most Druid decks, for instance. Or Hunter. He's yeah. just dead <laughs> here to the patron. Like, he gets two extra patrons off that Annoyotron. <laughs> Don't even know if he was supposed to play that. Yeah, the Annoyotron is uh, working against him here. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much game. No burn in hand. Yeah, he gets to... Uh, he's just going to die next turn. No, he dies this turn. There's no he lightning. Turn. You can slam your own Grim Wow, patron. yeah. You can slam your own Grim Patron or equip the War X or yeah, slam it and equip the Yeah, he maximized his damage. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Everyone did get in there. Yeah, they did. And like we were talking about, we had to wait. Wasn't that awesome? Come on. We had to wait nine games to see I this. I want to see lots more of that. But <laughs> there Unfortunately, it is. Kayuki took it, so yeah. uh, we are more likely to see more getting in here than Control Warrior. That's good. I think it's a better First day. reverse sweep. Yep. Wow. First reverse sweep. Next but it was, it was exactly as, as we planned it. It was it was the non-Hunter, <laughs> non-Warrior that basically tanked it for both players. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Koyuki got all of his losses with Rogue, <laughs> yeah. and the other guy got all of his losses with Shaman, <laughs> and we just see how exactly oh, how man. balanced Hearthstone is. Why did they bring is. those classes? Yeah. Come on. I, was, I thought it was awesome, though. I enjoyed it. What? Didn't some you? player in this tournament is going I to have a really good third deck, my yeah. favorite and they're going to win. of the entire series that time was just that Freezing Trap on two. Okay. <laughs> that won him the game, right? That won him that game, yeah. yeah. yeah it right did. there. Absolutely. Very small decisions that led to taking a really bad hand to the Well to we, the we saw some some very good plays throughout. Yeah, both there's players. definitely both players. Like Koyuki yeah. at the end there, how he did that patron turn perfectly and Yeah, it's, you it's, can it's, totally it's, practice that deck a lot. Yeah, you know you can tell yeah. he's a patron player. It's a deck you can play perfectly, just like most decks in Hearthstone, but it's uh, it's one that usually takes more time than you're allowed to play perfectly. Right. Yeah. You have to get going quick, mm -hmm. especially in live events. Like you can't you tend to take a lot more time thinking in live events, yeah. and then the rope hits you out of nowhere, and with Patron, that's bad. That was really one of the bad. fixes we were discussing. We just make Grim Patron animation twice as long, nerf oh, the deck. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Okay. That's you into that? No. No? <laughs> it's a very silly nerf. <laughs> Rather just nerf Force Long Commander, but hey. Yeah. Well, that's some, uh, that's some good stuff. Uh, I believe it's... Uh, it's Frodan who has uh, an interview ready with Koyuki. Uh, get his thoughts on his victory. Let's get into that. Thank you very much, Crip. That's right. I'm joined by Koyuki. He won his first match. Uh, you were down early on, and it seemed a little stressful. Just walk me through that series in terms of uh, how you were mentally thinking. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, I mean, he got some good RNG in both games with the Nefarian in the first one. Uh, and then with the boom bots doming me for seven, I, I, I want to know if there was a gasp in the crowd after that one because that was a pretty big, uh, pretty big turn. Um, but yeah, the first matchup was a pretty bad matchup for me, anyways. So I wasn't, I was surprised I was as close as I was. Um, but I mean, I've been playing tournaments forever. Being down 0-2 sucks a lot, but you just have to find a way to get back. For sure, uh, and it seemed like you were able to keep it together and you know get that rogue rolling eventually, which was important. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how you are doing yourself preparation-wise. You're on a new team, uh, Team Illuminati Hearthstone. So I guess uh, we're just going to go ahead and put it out there. Who, whose idea was it to call it Illuminati? Um, I'm just going to assume it's Alchemist. Uh, you know, when he approached me, he's like, I'm putting another team. This is what we're going to be called. And we've got a great group of guys that are, you know, joining on. So I was like, you know, every question I asked, he answered. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Sounds, uh, sounds good. So then uh, wh why, why them and not uh, another team? Because you've been around for a very long time, for over a year now, in terms of uh, your exposure to Hearthstone. You perform well in a few tournaments here and there. Uh, but yet this is the first 
notable team that I think you've joined. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I just never got a lot of serious offers. Um, I would get approached by teams here and there, and most of the time, you know, they'd approach me, say something, and then I'd never hear from them. They just, they might have made a team, but they disappear real quickly. Um, I was waiting for a good opportunity to join a solid team, so I turned down kind of a lot of, like, smaller team offers, you know, because I, I could have joined them and tried to work my way up, and that would have been fine as well. Um, but most of them just didn't seem that solid and kind of in and out. This one seems in it for the long haul, and that's what I was more worried about, so. You're, a, you're also a card game legend in other games, you know, like Legend of the Five Rings, for example. Um, but you also split your time. You recently won the, the most recent Gen Con, I believe. Uh, and so when you're playing these all the card games, uh, it's really hard to split your time. But are you focusing more on Hearthstone now that you've joined a team and you've gotten more serious? Or is it still like, well, I like Hearthstone, I'll just play this, kind of like Brian Kibler, for example, and I'll, I'll still play other games? Uh, I'm focusing more on Hearthstone. Um, El Favara has kind of been taking a back seat for the last five or six months. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely focusing strongly on Hearthstone more lately and less on other card games. So That's good. So we can finally expect Paladin to be back on the top of the horse, right? With you innovating, I'm pretty sure Paladin will be in a good spot. Maybe, maybe. Uh, it's, it's getting harder and harder to innovate. Uh, players are getting better. There's more players just in general. Uh, there's a lot more cards being explored, so it it takes quite a leap to innovate something meaningfully different, not just like a card or two, you know, gradual progression kind of thing. Sounds like a good opportunity for uh, Koyuki maybe to showcase his deck building as time goes on. Congratulations on your win, man. Good luck in the next match. Uh, we're going to go over to Crip, who's on the couch with a couple of players, and gather his thoughts as we get ready to go over there. Thank you, Froden. Uh, it was it was quite a match. It's uh, very good to see that uh, some of the players were obviously very good at the game. Um, you know, getting respect, getting on teams, getting in tournaments like these, and choosing to play Hearthstone. It's a good game, don't you think? Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic game. Uh, we're all here. We're all Hearthstone players, and we're here because we love the game. Yeah, and. Um, just uh, just after a short break here in a second, we will get to see uh, more of Koyuki. He will be playing against Demigod, who managed to uh, take out Trump uh, in the opening uh, match of the tournament. Uh, what, do, what do you think about that, Double S? Uh, Demigod is my teammate, and I know his style really well. He brought a very unique lineup that uh, no one was expecting, including casters. They knitted on that. But uh, Koyuki is, you know, he's been in the scene since there was a scene. So it's going to be, you know, the old face in the new, and I think it's going to be a really good match. Uh, I certainly think so. I'm, I'm glad to see that just the, the opening matches of the tournaments have just highlighted a lot of the uh, variety, even though some players, some people may have uh, not expected that. Uh, we saw Demigod's, you know, punishment towards Hunters, and we know Koyuki's got one, and you can't escape that. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how the two strategies uh, clash here with uh, what a lot of people consider to be one of the stronger lineups versus, you know, the counter to it. Interesting stuff. We will get into that match, uh, but before that, we will uh, go to a commercial break here, so uh, don't go anywhere. We'll uh, be back in just a second.